Good evening to everybody um, and welcome to all um, St. John's current boys, uh, players, rugby players, St. John's parents, St. John's teachers, coaches. Um, I wish you, I welcome you all um, this evening and I really hope that uh, you can uh, just gain some insight into into what we're trying to do and achieve as, uh, as a rugby uh, department um, at St. John's College. Just before we start, um, there's a, there's an option to make a, your your screen bigger on your on your top right uh, next to options. Uh, there's a block there. If you click on that, um, that uh, that should make uh, your screen bigger. And then uh, at the bottom uh, it says uh, ask a question. Um, you know while while the discussions are happening, um, you can uh, post questions um, on the chat, and uh, we'll get to those uh, questions uh, at the end uh, of uh, of our webinar. So this webinar is is based on uh, or focused on on on, on culture, and, uh, and 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 culture can mean so many different things to so many people. But uh, our focus is is obviously to try to find it to to what St John's College Rugby is trying to achieve, what St John's College Rugby is trying to do, and um, and the processes you know that that go uh, with that. So so for me, culture is. Is all about the people, um, what they do, um, how do how do they behave? Um, when you see how they behave, can you determine what they are about, where they are, who they who they associate themselves with, um, what they do, and uh, as well as you know what type of people they are. Um, you know, for me, a good culture is 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 being inspired. You know, so if I see something. Um, that I'm not really associated with, but I just see it happening from a distance, and I think to myself, "Wow, I just saw a, a certain behaviour that you know that resonates within me. Um, what do they do? How can I get involved in that sort of um, environment?" Um, and lastly, just before I hand over to 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 to, to the boys, uh, my dream is, is 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 to develop good people. And uh, and obviously, with with what we're going to be hearing from uh, from here on end is 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 what the boys will be speaking about. And you know, if 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 they can, you know, just extend some of the messages that we've started, um, I really think they will also develop um, themselves to be good people. But they will also develop other people, you know, to to be also good people. And um, I'm looking forward to to hearing what uh, what the boys have to say about this. So I'm going to hand over to the boys. Thank you very much, and welcome again. Hi everyone. Uh, good afternoon. I hope you're all doing well. So my name is Alex Sitman, and today Josi, Ek, Josh, Greg, and I will who are standing around me. Uh, we'll be presenting to you the St. John's College Rugby Culture that we want heading into 2021 and beyond. So if you'll give me a sec, I'm just going to present this slideshow, which we actually presented to our open group um, a few months ago. Great, so hopefully you can all see that. Um, so before we start, I'd like to share some concepts that I think are incredibly important to keep in mind throughout this presentation. Uh, what, we, what we'll be speaking about comes from them, and so it's imperative that we can recall them throughout the, the duration of this presentation. First of all, as Mr. Lynch has said, and as I'm sure he'll say again in the future, good things happen to good people. This single line forms the basis of the entire like culture we want to establish this year and beyond, all the way from the smallest pre-prep boy with the biggest aspirations to the biggest first-team player. It's the overarching theme of all that we want to achieve this year um, on and off the field. And it's what's going to make us not only good rugby players, but a good team and great people. This principle holds true for everybody in the rugby community at St. John's. And it's a mantra that we believe we should carry into our rugby games, practices, and into our lives as individuals um, and on the field. It encompasses paying it forward, being kind, selfless, and so much more. Next, it's important that we recognize 
that we, what we do this year and over the next few years leaves a mark, a permanent one. It's because the young men who will be talking to you today um, are responsible for rugby's development at St. John's that it's really, really important that we get it as right as we possibly can. What we do in 2021 will not only determine what St. John's rugby looks like in 5, 10, 15, 20 years, um, but also what St. John's as a whole looks like. And that's because it's impossible to deny that rugby and war cries are like an, an enormous defining characteristic for St. John's, um, for our school at least. Because of this, we have to take what we do this year into consideration and what we leave behind into consideration, especially after the first year in more than 100 years where there's been no inter-school rugby. Finally, it's important that we find a balance between what we want to do for the rugby culture at St. John's and what's been done in the past. We can't afford to throw away everything that the Johannians before us, um, who've come before us, have done, and nor can we afford to perpetuate their traditions and cultures exactly. So, going into the next 20 minutes or so, it'd be great if you could, if you'd, you know, if you could keep a few of these words, keywords in mind from the list. Obviously, there are more that aren't on here, but these are the ones that are really important to me and the ones that have helped me to shape my experience of rugby at St. John's and my experience as an individual student at St. John's. One, we leave a legacy. Practice makes perfect. We represent the college above all. We seek to inspire and learn and support. We want to be ambitious, resilient and tenacious in our approach to every single game and practice. We want to respect others and be respected for the way we go about playing rugby. There are three fundamental questions we can discuss when assessing our culture. How do we want others to describe us? What should our culture look like? And how do we build that culture? And that's essentially what we're going to be talking to you about today. And so without further ado, um, I invite E.K. to, oh, Horsi, to come speak to you. Thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Kosi Tide Mashwakhane, and um, the topic that I will be sharing is um, organized. Um, so I think we need to understand as a college, um, when we talk about organized, it's not necessarily the um, looking into the details of how we play on the field, but I think, you know, organized goes way far beyond that. And um, the bullets that I have on screen talks about respecting coaches' time, teammates' times, and the time um, at your team as a whole, and time of, um, you know, just the, the person next to you. Um, and I think it's crucial in understanding that um, when rugby is a simulation of life, I think that's the one thing that Mr. Lynch has been able to drill into us as an age group. Um, and that's something that we want to be able to share um, beyond just the first team, but have it really be encompassed within the culture that surrounds rugby at St. John's. Um, and when we talk about organization, we talk about, um, you know, just looking at the small nuances that make us St. John's boy, St. John's boy on and off the field. Um, so, Leads, this leads to organization on the field and both uh, both attack and defense. Um, as much as it's an aspect that we speak about um, in terms of beyond field play, when on the field, St. John's wants to play a particular type of rugby um, that you know expands throughout the college, um, as well as I'm sure the prep, um, as that's our biggest feeder. Um, so organization on the field. And that just goes down to the boys understanding that ref is key and respect is maintained irrespective of how you might feel about a certain play. And I think this for me was really highlighted throughout my college career um, when coached by Mr. Norris. Um, there was an incident on a field one game. And I think the conversation that we had with him um, was quite simple. The boys were quite upset because um, a ref had uh, missed the call, the boys felt. And Mr. Marsh's response was that, you know, the best way that you can combat that is quite simply get up and carry on playing and do and stick to the script um, because no player has ever changed 
um, a ref's mind and no ref has ever overturned a call because of how loud a player screams. Um, so understanding that organization and respect go hand in hand when we are on the field and sticking to the systems that have been put in place. Um, our coaches are highly qualified and they take time to look at how it is that we step onto the field and the conduct in which we present ourselves in. So it would be crucial for us to keep that in mind and stick to it. Um, and that leads me to the third point, mopping up after a session and leaving the gym and the field in an organized manner. Again, um, all of these points um, are interlinked with the concept of respect, um, whether it be time, whether it be um, facilities, and whether it be simply just respecting the person next to you and understanding that um, you know rugby is a game of inter of relationships and whether it be building and breaking them down and understanding the nuances of interaction. So mopping up is just um, how we've come to interact with each other and understanding that the facilities that we used take time to prepare. Burger is one of the best fields, um, in my opinion, in the country that we've had the pleasure of, of playing on. And when you step onto Burger, there's a certain level of respect that needs to be maintained for the field. And when you step off it, you want to leave it in the condition that you found it and respect that, you know, whether it be ground staff or the coaches, they've taken time out to um, prepare and make sure that our session goes as smooth as possible so that when we step onto the field on a Saturday fixture, we're able to um, perform to the best of our ability. So that's returned by just showing common courtesy. Um, and that's something that we'd like to see, um, you know, become part of the culture of being a Johannian um, on the field and of course off the, off the field as well. Like we said, or like I said in the beginning, rugby, um, we see it as a simulation of life. And through that, you're able to learn the little nuances that build relationships. And it teaches you how to interact with people. It teaches you about yourself um, more so than any other um, you know, sports that you can interact with. Um, and I think that's what we look look at when we speak about organization, just keeping, sorry, um, when we look at organization, just keeping um, to the script and understanding that there's a mach this machine doesn't run on its own um, and we're not entitled to it. Um, it's something that we continuously need to keep working at and contributing to and never getting too big for the system. Um, it's something that we continuously feed into, and the more that we feed into it, it will feed back into us. Um, but I think that's it from me for organization. Um, next, I'm calling on um, Josh Bull um, to speak on Relentless. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Josh Boo, and tonight I'm going to be speaking about relentlessness. Um, the college must be harsh, but obviously in a respectful way. Intense. The college must be a wave, and we just keep coming. We want to suffocate our opponents. When they get tired, we get stronger, and our speed and intensity just keeps building, and we fight till the final whistle no matter what. Not only do we want to be relentless with the ball in hand, but defense wins games, as coach says all the time. On defense, we need to be loud and alert. We need to be talking to, to our brothers next to us. And if uh, we get this nailed down, we'll be un unstoppable on the field. When you are relentless about something, you mean business. And when we are on that rugby field, regardless of the team you're in or the opposition you're facing, your opponent needs to know that they need to be ready for the fire the college is bringing. Thank you. Hello again, again everyone. Um, so the next, the next answer to the question, how do we want others to describe us, is honest. So honesty isn't obviously only about the act of not lying. It's also about having the courage of your convictions being able to express how you feel to those who've got your back and growth. So there are two aspects of honesty that we want to take into this presentation, on and off the rugby field. Firstly, let's talk about honesty on the actual field of play. This year, and certainly in the next few years of college rugby, 
we want our players, young and old, to define what kind of rugby players they're going to be. Ultimately, what we want from every St. John's student is honesty, first and foremost, in all senses of the word. Yes, of course we want our players to fight tooth and nail for the boys in maroon and blue standing next to them, whether that be on the, on the rugby pitch, defending their dignity, or just backing them up. But rule number one, we do not instigate. We do not throw punches where they're not needed. We do not pinch and kick and bite in the ruck where the ref can't see us. Yes, we do get into their heads, but not through words either, through, act, through action. That is a notion we want to instill um, for our culture. Every time our best player smashes their 10, and every time our most fearless player kamikazes himself into a ruck, a little bit of fear trickles into their spines. We are going to win matches by playing rugby as it was meant to be played. And it's not only about morality. Coincidentally, the ref actually doesn't like it when we cheat and start fights, as hard as that is to believe. This can cost us the ball and points. Off the field, we have to be honest with ourselves, our coaches and our teammates about how much work we're putting in. Even more importantly, we have to be honest with each other about what we think needs to change, but only while being respectful. A policy that we want to introduce is, if you see something you don't like, speak up. If none of us do that, there's no room for growth. I now invite Greg to address you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Greg Ford, and I'm going to be speaking about brotherhood. Brotherhood is by definition an association or community of people linked by a common interest, religion, or trade. In our case, this is our rugby at St. John's College as a whole. Our association or community as St. John's and our common interest, religion, or trade as rugby. So what makes us brothers? We wear the same badge and play for the same reason. Take the biggest teams in the world and look at their culture. Take Chasing the Sun for an example, the bonds those players formed during that World Cup. And now call on EK to speak about accountability. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ike Anagu, and I'll be speaking about accountability. Accountability is to be able to justify actions or decisions and take responsibility for them. Um, for me, most important, the most important part of that definition is take responsibility, take ownership. Coming to St. John's, I realized that not every boy is a leader of men or can lead a group. But what is important is that boys are able to lead themselves. Boys are able to take ownership and be organized and accountable for what they have to do and um, everything they have to do in terms of boarding culture, in terms of um, being organized in class, being on time and all that kind of stuff. Um, as, as a rugby team, um, we'd like to take ownership as senior members of a team. You lead other boys, you lead players to make the right decisions and help them benefit the team and help them improve as individuals. Accountability also entails putting your hand up, even if you're not quite a leader, but just stepping up when, it's, when you need to, when the team counts on you. And um, in, in, in a school situation, if you're working in groups and all that kind of thing, um, being able to put your opinions forward, being able to put ideas forward to benefit the whole group. And lastly, making decisions that will benefit the team. This is about in game making the two on one pass instead of um, taking the ball into contact, playing the pass so that your um, teammates will be able to score points and put points on the board for the benefit of the team. In the boarding couch, in the boarding house, um, I experienced that a lot of the times boys have to do things that will benefit everyone because we live in a place where you're not living alone, you're living with other people, and you'll have to. Um, you have to do things that will make other people feel comfortable because you're not living alone, as I said. So um, that's another point of accountability. Thank you very much. I think the next slide will be Hosi Mashukhane. Oh, 
always do the right thing. Um, this um, greatly uh, interlocks with uh, my last topic of organization. Um, again, as you can see on the screen, um, the highlighted parts are respect, cleanliness, honor, and off the field, living up to the words, Lux Vita Caritas, which is on the crest of every St. John's Boys badge. Um, whether you're a first team player or you are playing in the under 14 Ds or even the under 10, um, 10 aside squad. Um, so respect, I won't dive too, too deep into. Um, I think I already spoke extensively on the topic, but cleanliness is something that, um, you know, I'm going to take a step, a page out of, um, you know, my mom's religious book and say that cleanliness is next to God. Um, that's what I've always been taught throughout life. And cleanliness doesn't necessarily mean, um, you know, picking up after yourself as much as that's what we'd like to see within the college. Cleanliness is quite simply speaks to character. Um, we want our rugby players uh, at St. John's to be men of character who are able to not only step onto the field and show off their skill, but show off their skill in life their life skills, be able to interact with people and make genuine relationships and build bonds and ties in this space that lasts a lifetime. Um, for me personally, my dad was an old boy. And to this day, I still hear words and um, still meet people who he was able to interact with through his interactions on the rugby field. And those relationships did span, span a lifetime. Um, cleanliness for me, as much as it is linked about on field, um, how we interact on field. Um, I think Alex spoke about um, us, the ref not liking the boys, you know, giving a kick and a jab here and there. But I think that speaks largely, like I said, to character. Honor, this again, highly interlinked and interwoven together. Honor speaks to a person's conduct. What do you do? behind closed doors? How do you present yourselves? How do you see yourself in the mirror? Um, how do you want people to see you? And how do you want people to see St. John's? Because um, effectively, all of us are an extension of this great institution. Um, and that needs to be at the forefront of every boy's mind. And how do we do that um, on a rugby field through every training session? Um, that's an understanding that you quite simply need to keep an eye out for the person next to you and they will do the same and represent yourselves at the best of your ability. Um, so every boy should continuously understand and want to give the best of themselves at all times. Lux Vita Caritas. Those are words that every St. John's boy hears um, numerous times throughout their high school career or college career um, do their career as a, as a Johannian. Um, those form the foundation of the culture that we want to see at St. John's. Light, life, and love. Um, I'm going to start with the love aspect. When you step onto a rugby field, the person next to you is your brother. Now, there are 15 men in a 23-man squad. The likelihood that you like every man that stands next to you is slim. But the one thing that should be evident throughout the age groups is love for the person next to you. Your teammate needs to understand that when things get tough, whether it be him missing a tackle, knowing you'll be willing to cover it, or off the field, if he's a great rugby player but happens to be struggling academically, or in another aspect of life that you might be able to assist your, him with, um, love forms the basis of the culture that we want to see. And we want to see boys be able to step off the field and hold each other's hands and make sure that you thrive in every aspect of college life. Life. Life forms the basis of human interaction and relationships. And it's crucial to what we want to see as Johannians. It forms the building blocks of what makes a Johannian a Johannian. I always say that Schools like the college are not so prevalent and so esteemed quite simply because um, of um, you know, the educational system. I mean, of course it helps that we've got two or three doctorates, um, teaching, doctors teaching us within the master department, but I think schools like ours um, 
are put on the map because of the type of person that they produce. Life. The, the rugby culture that we want to see wants to form part of the building blocks that encompass a person who is equipped, right? It's, it's said in our prayer, rightly trained in body, mind, and character, life. And that leads to light. As a Johannian and as a rugby player at St. John's, when you step out of the borders of St. John's, it's your duty to spread the light that you have been able to witness on campus and in the locker room and spread it. I think Mr. West has a perfect way in phrasing it. Every Johannian has the duty of spreading the idea of pixie dust. What we experience here can change our lives personally, but if we take the greater step to step beyond the field and share just a little of it, it creates a trickle down effect in society. Um, and it just goes down to boys doing their part. Um, you're not gonna change the world um, quite simply because you have an idea. But I think what we're trying to get around to is understanding that um, you know, the St. John's rugby program doesn't only look to breed great rugby players, but great human beings who are able to interact with society and do the right thing. The next slide that I lead on to, um, I'm going to ask Josh Bull to come present um, on relationships and connections. Relationships and connections. The older guys in this group have done a really good job in including us younger guys into the team and making us feel like we're all on the same level and there's no sense of hierarchy. We want the younger players to feel a part of this as well. We want the younger players to continue the St. John's legacy. From a personal point of view, I remember the first team players coming to watch my age group when I was under 13, and I'll be there this year to support our younger teams in the same way. I feel that this will build connections uh, with the players all around. We need to make these relationships with the boys around us so they feel like our, our, our brothers. When you have this, you'll be able to trust the boys around you on the rugby field and feel like they have your back no matter what. Relationships and connections will build our chemistry on the field. The college plays for each other and not ourselves. Thank you. Bonding and team activities. As a group, we've been bonding through our early morning sessions and through the camp we had last year in November. But I feel that we can do more, such as a team Brian on a Friday, or even coming down for a game of touch as a team during the week. Through bonding and team activities comes brotherhood. Rugby camps with the top players in the college teach basic, teach basic skills to the pre, prep and prep boys, getting the college first team to attend prep first team capping ceremonies and handing out of caps having friendly bribes to watch rugby with all teams across the college community. Thank you. Top down and bottom up support. Spreading the love beyond the blues locker room. I think the one thing that we've tried to stress throughout our presentation is that this isn't um, a presentation that's tailored towards simply the first team. This is for every boy who dons a maroon or blue St. John's rugby jersey. Um, what we want to see is that every boy is able to play and give as much of themselves, in fact, all of themselves, every time that they step onto that field, quite simply for the love of the badge on their chest. And how that's done is through the continuous support by those that we aspire to be. So um, I remember back to my remove year, um, being able to watch Dave McAlpine, the likes of Kieran Holston, Phil Paruta, um, play rugby every Saturday and they quite simply return the favor by coming to our games. Spreading the love beyond the Blues locker room is what they did. 
And today I'm grateful to be able to be seated, seated here as a senior player um, who is able to say that if it wasn't for the hand that they extended and the kindness that they showed to guys like myself, Sidman and Ike, when they didn't have to, um, we would have never tried to or even aspired to give as much of ourselves that we do when interacting with the St. John's Rugby program, whether that be in the gym, on the field, or even in the, in the classroom. Because the reality of being a player, a rugby player at St. John's is that it becomes part of your identity. It becomes part of how people recognize you and how people interact with you. And it's something that you carry on your back. So it's crucial that we understand that, you know, the love doesn't quite simply um, belong to those who are playing at the highest level within your age groups. It's not just for the 18 players. Every player matters. Um, and we want to spread the love beyond beyond simply the 18 groups. Doing the small things right. Um, doing the small things right was part of a bigger topic earlier on. But again, that just speaks to understanding the nuances of the type of rugby we want to play. Um, it goes into every time you step onto the field, just the please and the thank yous that we hear, the shaking of hands at the end of the game. I think that's something that's really crucial. Quite often, emotions get high on a rugby field. And like I said earlier, this game is a simulation of life, but we love it. And at the end of the day, we need to understand that when you step onto um, in between those four lines of a rugby field, um, you're going to war for about 60 minutes in high school rugby. But at the end of the day, doing the small thing right means being able to look beyond what happened on the field at the end of the game and shake hands. And I think that's the beauty of our game. I mean, obviously, the boys could never go grab a beer, but common practice amongst <laughs> rugby players is, you know, the understanding that um, once we step off the field, you're able to shake a hand and um, step into the bar for so some of the older guys uh, or the parents. Um, none of us. We don't do that. No, good St. John's boys. Um, serving those that we've been tasked to lead. Um, I think that's tailored more so to the boys who are older. And again, I look back at my relationship with the guys who played when I was in Remove and even beyond that, when I was in grade seven. Um, I think the most crucial point in my college rugby career was uh, a capping ceremony that I was able to attend when I was in grade seven. Um, uh, at the time, which Kevin Musigant had taken um, myself and a couple other players, James Groves, um, Yusuf Ganji, um, into the um, Johannian uh, to experience what it was like to be part of the first team uh, setup. And we got to watch them get capped. Um, and not only did we watch them get capped, they came and returned the favor. And in grade seven, when we played our first festival, um, when we played our first game at the Easter Fest, um, I remember we were handed our caps by, um, you know, the first team players who had come through the prep and were now playing um, at first team level in the college. Um, so I think that just speaks greatly to, you know, serving those that we've been tasked to lead. Uh, as a first team player and as anyone who dons a blue blazer uh, and more especially a blue jersey, you need to understand that it's a responsibility to leave that jersey in a better place than you found it. Um, you know, no one is entitled to that jersey. Um, it can be taken away just as quick as it can be um, as it can be received. Um, there's always guys looking to, you know, the competition is always tough. And always guys are always on your heels looking to take that position from you. Um, but that should never result in resentment um, to competition. Um, Servant leadership is the one thing that the college prides itself of and understanding that when you're there on the field, in the locker rooms, um, outside of off the field, um, you are serving the blazer. You are in constant servitude to the person next to you and to the badge that's on your chest. Spreading the concept of pixie dust. Um, now, this is a concept that was brought to me by Mr. West um, in one of our prefix meetings. Spreading the pixie dust quite simply goes into explaining that everyone has got the ability to make someone else smile. And the ability to make someone else smile can go a mile. And what we want our rugby players to understand is that we don't fall into the narrative of quite simply 
be being bro and that walks the hallways. Um, you know, rugby players are compassionate. Rugby players, um, you know, are people who are approachable. Um, and that's the culture that we want to breed. A culture that we want to breed is not one that preaches exclusivity um, of, you know, individualism. It's very, very much centered around, um, you know, bringing people together and really just showing appreciation to, um, of showing appreciation to the ability that we've been gifted in being able to step out onto the field. And I think that should be, you know, proves more so um, evident now uh, more than it has in the past. Uh, myself and the guys that are sitting around me right now, having not had the privilege to actually step out onto a first team rugby field in terms of a fixture. Um, we've practiced for two years and what we've come to understand is that the hard work doesn't stop irrespective of knowing when the next fixture is. And when we step off to the field, um, off the field, how do you continue that momentum? Um, how does it reflect in everyday life? Um, you know, are you the type of guy that comes and wants to show everyone that you're a great rugby player and that you can pass a ball 20 meters? Or are you the type of guy that wants to show the world and show your counterparts and your peers that you continuously give your best at everything that you do? And I think if you're able to show people that, the people around you are inspired by it and they're able to then apply the same to their own lives and to their own dealings within the college. Um, but that's it from me. Um, I think I'm passing on to um, I am passing on to Mr. Lynch um, as we are um, this uh, reaching the conclusion of our presentation. Um, I think Mr. Lynch is going to open up for a Q and A. But just before um, I pass on to Mr. Lynch, I think the one thing I'd like to speak on is um, you know understanding that the culture that we're trying to breed to breed here at college, um, you know is has really been thought out by those that have you know uh, been put in the places of uh, put in the places to make decisions on how the sh on shaping um the culture of st john's um it's been great experiencing it in myself last year having had been in the first team squad and understanding that um rugby is not preached um or taught on the basis of you know quite simply being an on-field sport um but it's quite literally becomes your religion and i said it in the beginning that this game becomes a simulation of life and it teaches you a lot about yourselves and those around you and i think that's something that we are wholeheartedly trying to encompass within uh, our culture here at st john's um but that is it from me um and mr lynch can i please pass on to you thank you Thank you very much uh, to the young men um, that have just uh, presented to us now. Um, there, is a, there is a saying that goes uh, um, by the quote of, of you go to war with those that you trust. And uh, I'm extremely grateful that uh, I can work uh, with these young, solid gentlemen um, as uh, they also have a very, very strong character. They have a very strong beliefs about what is right, what is wrong. But I also believe that with, with, with the philosophy that you're trying to develop good people, uh, to develop good quality human beings that will influence society, influence those that, uh, that are around them, um, I really think uh, that uh, we as a school, not necessarily rugby, but we as a school are in good hands because I really also believe that this is not just something that, uh, that we're talking about. It's something that we want to, 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 to act on. It's something that we want to action. And uh, it's something that we're going to hold um, ourselves accountable to. So um, I don't see any questions in the, in the question bar. Uh, oh, there is one there. Uh, how are you, uh, from uh, Mr. Mr. Van der Berg, Clint Van der Berg, how are you coping without actually playing? Um, I've got an answer, but I think it would be best for, for, for one of the, 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 the five uh, gents uh, to answer that. How are we coping without actually playing? Um, I mean, it's been tough. Um, it really has been tough. But I think it's just the constant hope that um, when things do simmer down, um, we need to be ready. 
um, and not taking a back seat, unfortunately, is not something that we're willing to let ourselves do. Um, good things happen to good people is something that Coach Lynch is constantly preaching. And like we said, that was going to the nuances of always giving the best of yourself and everything that you do. So even though there isn't a Saturday fixture, um, it becomes a challenge for every boy who steps onto the field to give the best of themselves at every training session and just keeping the hope alive. Um, I mean, rugby goes beyond high school for most of us um, when you step into varsity as well. So just being able to um, get the experience of being coached under um, people like Mr. Lynch and Mr. Norris, the, the likes of Mr. Lynch and Mr. Norris, is something an, an opportunity that most of us wouldn't want to pass up. Um, and it's something that stays at the forefront of our mind. So that's how we stay, keep at it. Um, just keep hitching away at it and hopefully when COVID settles down, we do get to showcase what we've been working at for the last couple of months. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jose. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see any other questions. I think uh, just in closing for myself, uh, from my side, um, I would just like to thank, um, you know, the, the boys that have presented this, students that have presented this, uh, this webinar. Um, it was really, really uh, self-directed. It was all something that they came up with. It's something that uh, they put down on paper and they obviously addressed this first to, to the squad. But we thought it would be very appropriate to, to share it with, uh, with us in John's community. Um, and then uh, just lastly, we, we, thank, we thank you once again for, for jumping on. And, uh, and hopefully soon uh, we can uh, get back on the field and uh, we can uh, make each and every one of you uh, proud, uh, proud uh, in, in what we do and, and how we do that. And uh, wishing everyone a blessed evening. Thank you very much.